Hey guys, Level Cap here, and welcome to another episode of This Week in Gaming, the new show where we cover all things FPS. If this story in particular interests you, be sure to check the description for links to all the news I'm covering today. So if you saw my video about Battlefield 1's Holiday Battle Pack that supposedly dropped a golden skin for the heavy tank, you know that many people were pretty pissed about it. Basically, the chance for the skin dropping was so low it was impossible to get. DICE did tweak the drop rate for it, and apparently some people did get it, but that was after myself and many other people dropped a ton of money on dozens of battle packs only to get nothing in return. Since my video, DICE have put some text that reads super rare next to the new legendary vehicle skin in Battlefield 1, which is honestly the bare minimum they could have done. I wasn't expecting them to issue a bunch of refunds, but something in return for uh, the tons of people that totally wasted their money would have been nice. DICE put content in the game that was borderline, if not totally impossible to get offered people a way to spend real money trying to get it and never bothered to mention that they'd never get the drop. I really hope that the Chinese law forcing devs to show their probabilities of paid loot drops in their games happens in America and other countries because situations like this would be so easy to avoid. Now the news hasn't been all bad for Battlefield 1 this week. The most recent patch DICE put out for the game on consoles has really improved performance. On both Xbox One and PS4, Battlefield 1 struggled to maintain 60 FPS, often running 55 FPS or lower. Thanks to tweaks to the dynamic resolution scaling made by the patch, Battlefield 1 is running at a nearly rock solid 60 FPS, even in the demanding scenes. The next big Battlefield 1 patch drops next month as detailed on a recent post on the Battlefield website. The post doesn't list any specifics other than gameplay improvements. Personally, I'm really hoping DICE fixes the bug where you can't shoot your gun after getting revived with this next patch. Sooner would always be nice, but this is one of those bugs that cost players big time, and if it happens in a game like CSGO or Overwatch, people would lose their freaking minds. And speaking of Overwatch, the game just got a new map. Oasis is a pretty standard control map and it plays really well. The map update also brought a balance update to Roadhog aimed at eliminating his hook dragging players through the walls. Unfortunately, it still needs some work. As you can see here, the player clearly gets dragged through a wall by it. This is one of those things holding Overwatch back from being a truly refined esports title. Now, for those of you unaware, CES has kicked off this week with Mass Effect Andromeda finally having a release date of March 21st. The date was announced as part of a short trailer at NVIDIA's CES keynote. The stuff that interested everyone was the combat and character customization footage shown in the trailer. Based on the skill respect options that were shown, some people are worried BioWare have watered down the RPG elements of Mass Effect a little bit too much. Traditionally, Mass Effect has always been the kind of game where you pick your class at the start and that's it. There's no swapping in and out of different class if you don't like it. This trailer makes it seem like you can just switch your entire class on the fly. Now, of course, we don't know just from the trailer if this is, in fact, how the game is going to function, but Mass Effect has always been a game about player choices, and if this is indeed a feature, I'm frankly okay with it. Now, CES is known for all the useless tech that gets shown off like robots that dance in your refrigerators that can tweet, but there will be a few really interesting things shown off this year that don't look like smoke and mirrors. The biggest new tech is the Vive Tracker, which is an accessory for the HTC Vive that sticks to real world objects and lets you use them in VR. Combined with VR gloves, this is really the kind of tech to take VR that next step. One of my biggest issue with shooter games in VR is that whenever you picked up a rifle that wasn't a pistol, uh, it never felt like a rifle because you had to hold it with a single handed controller. Replacing those wand style controllers currently available for the Rift and Vive with your actual hands or actual actual weapons, looks like it's going to be the way forward with this kind of technology. The Vive Tracker supposedly launches quarter two this year. HTC also demoed a Vive running wirelessly with a new add-on made by a third-party company called TPCast. Getting rid of VR's cable tether makes using these headsets a much better experience overall, while the TPCast is launching at $250 in quarter two of this year, I'm really hoping the next generation of VR headsets has stuff like this built in. HTC showed the TPCast off to make it clear they want the headset to be wireless, and they're working to make it happen. My guess is version 
version 2 of the Vive will have a wireless option that costs a bit more than the standard wired one. With any luck, this will still be cheaper than the first generation of headsets because that's the biggest thing holding VR back right now. In other CES hardware news, Razer demoed their Project Valerie, a multi-display laptop. Now, Razer is known for their big ideas that never happen, and I don't think Project Valerie will be coming out anytime soon. But the idea of a multi-monitor capable tablet or laptop accessory seems very realistic to me. Everyone from Apple to Microsoft is pushing their laptop users towards high-end tablets that have the horsepower for demanding stuff like Photoshop and video editing. The biggest complaint anyone using a laptop for serious work is that the screen has always seemed to be too small to really get any good work done. Being able to buy, say, Microsoft Surface Book in one of their Surface tablets and having them work together as extra monitors for each other seems like it would be fairly useful. And when it comes to connecting monitors to your PC, I'm sure everyone knows the pain of not having the right cable. Recently, things have gotten really messy. 4K, 144Hz, ultra-wide, all the latest and greatest monitors seem to need a different kind of cable just to get them to work as advertised. Thankfully, the people behind HDMI have announced the next generation of standard, 2.1. It's supposed to support 4K up to 120Hz and even 8K at 60Hz and frame syncing tech like G-Sync. What this means is that the HDMI 2.1 capable GPUs will be able to use an HDMI cable for basically any monitor you plug into it that supports the new standard. And in our final bit of news this week at CES, NVIDIA announced the launch of their cloud gaming service for PC and Mac, GeForce Now. Basically, you pay $25 for 20 hours of gaming that uses NVIDIA servers to render the game and displays the output on your PC. The demo, of course, looked really good, and we've seen this kind of stuff with NVIDIA's grid service on their Shield devices. That said, 25 bucks for 20 hours of gaming is pretty expensive. Personally, I don't see this as the final format for this technology. If you can imagine having a server-side rendering and capability, you can start making games that look way better than what we have now. Combining parallel processing together in multiple graphics, you could start creating, say, MMORPGs that have graphics 20 times better than what we have nowadays, and with a subscription-based fee for playing the game, you now have an amazing MMORPG that blows anything else out of the water. However, for extremely fast reaction time games like Counter-Strike or Overwatch, it's unclear as to whether or not this technology will really be that beneficial, as I'm sure there is going to be some degree of latency with it. Anyway, that wraps it up for today's episode of This Week in Gaming. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about all the new tech being announced at CES. And as always, I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.